Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to Let's Try slash Let's Tutorial Democracy 4. Democracy is one of the game franchises that I have really, really, really loved over the years. Um, I'm a big fan of actually a lot of things Positec games have, have made. Uh, I've played tons of Kudos, Gratuitous of Space Battle is a wonderful thing. But really, Democracy is the franchise that is just... It's really held our attention a lot over the years. Uh, it's a perennial favorite on the channel here when we, we do uh, charity live streams. Often I get my wife to come down to play because we are, we're just we just really enjoy this game a lot. Democracy 4 is just coming out of early access uh, as I'm recording this. If you take a look at the links down below in the doobly-doo, you can see where you can pick it up uh, yourself as well. Um, lots of replay of that replayability here in Democracy uh, uh, that's definitely helped as well by the uh, very big modding community that the Democracy franchise has had in the past so uh, that's very exciting anyway without further ado let's jump into the game so you will be running a country that is the point of democracy you will be taking the helm of a country and uh, the game does ship with a, a wide variety of them we got the us the uk japan france canada australia spain germany italy and South Korea right out of the box. And again, uh, the modding community tends to generate a huge number of these. I'm just running the game vanilla here to show you the experience, but um, it's usually one of the first things people do after playing a game or two is they hit the workshop because there's so much good stuff that gets put in there. Really good community. Anyway, just shout out to you guys. I've never made a mod for, well, anything really, uh, but I'm really thankful pe for, for people who are modders. We're gonna play as Canada today because I'm Canadian, and I thought that might be fun to talk about. Uh, so we get a little bit of a description of our country over here. We get some statistics, including national obsessions, maple syrup, ice hockey, politeness, diversity. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Canada's got some issues, but um, I, I appreciate that uh, Positec has put a, a positive spin on, on Canada over here. I mean, I suppose it's better than some places. Sure. But anyway, um, we've got adjustments over here. So um, every country plays a little bit different. Like, when you think about Canada, when you compare Canada to, say, a European country, the sheer amount of empty space in Canada is mind-boggling. Um, it's a very low population density, even within our major, like, metropolitan areas. Like, sure, downtown core Toronto, for example, is going to be fairly packed in, but the, the greater Toronto area as a whole is still not that dense and um you know you things are far away Every, everyone's got to own a car basically to do anything in anywhere in canada especially where i am in northern ontario for example right if you don't have a car you can't do anything um and so entire all cities are designed around the assumption that everyone's got a car which means that everyone has to have a car because you can't get anywhere on foot and public transit options are pretty poor but maybe this is something i can fix running canada here in the game so uh so every country will have some slight tweaks to some of the baseline mechanics to represent the situation here um anyway we'll go ahead and play uh, you do get to choose your party name. So there's a large list of predefined party names over here. You can choose anything. Hey, we could be the science party. Ain't no party like a science party because in a science party... I don't have a punchline. I'm sorry. Um, oh, I like how we'd be opposed by the anti-corruption movement. Does that imply we're corrupt? I don't know. Maybe we can uh, pick something else. Um, we'll be uh, the Dominion. Oh, there we go. Run by a bunch of changelings. I like it. Any Deep Space Nine fans out there? Uh, and the equality party over here, but yeah, we can we can rename anything we want. We can we could be the Brussels sprouts party because they are excellent and good for you. Uh, we are uh, we have three parties available over here. Canada's actually got more than than three parties, uh, but you know I guess there's three more dominant ones. Wouldn't it be terrible to live in a country with only like a two party system? Ugh. I couldn't even imagine. And we've got some extra sliders over here. Uh, this, don't be confused. This is not 100% of Canadians will be socialist. This is we are leaving the default amount of socialism for Canada. Uh, we could make Canada twice as socialist as it is in the game here, or we could make it not at all socialist, but we'll go ahead and leave all the sliders. There we go. At the default over here that we've got starting debt. And we're only a trillion dollars in debt. You know, no biggie, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we get a bit of a breakdown of our situation, including uh, these little uh, these little indicators about our situation. Green is good, so we have high GDP, decent health, not as good as I might like, decent education. Uh, crime and poverty are in green to show that the situation's pretty decent, but honestly, that's I think more poverty than we would like, and even the crimes, you know, it, we, we'd like we'd like no crime. Could we go with no crime? That would be nice as well. But the situation's not dire over there. Unemployment's a little bit more more bad 
Boy, I'm good at English. Unemployment's a little bit more bad. It's an orange over here to indicate this is a, a little bit of an issue. Now, if we begin term of office over here, you might be a little bit intimidated by the screen. It's actually, what's, what's beautiful about this game is actually very easy to play, very difficult to master. Um, but the user interface here, I mean, this is a user interface that has been in existence for multiple iterations of the Democracy franchise. Um, and it's certainly different in four. For example, things are different sizes here, which I believe is new to four. I don't, I don't think it was like that at all in previous versions. I think everything was uh, the same sort of circle. So things are scaling to demonstrate uh, um, this kind of amount of importance of things. And a lot of these things can also be adjusted in various options and stuff as well. But yeah, it looks very scary, but let me give you a quick breakdown. Top left corner here, we've got our financial situation, total income, expenditures, this is per quarter, and this over here is our deficit. So we're currently losing money every quarter, and we're already a trillion dollars in debt, so that's only gonna get worse. Mm, not fantastic, but what are you gonna do? Um, over here is the popularity with various voting groups. So the colored bar is how popular we are. So the poor approve of us fairly decently, retirees as well, they're keen, socialists, state employees, they're all fairly happy with us and will probably vote for us. Uh, whereas the religious people, the middle income, the conservatives, and even the environmentalists are a little bit cranky. Now, whether or not we choose to deal with their issues, one of the things you got to ask yourself is how many people fall under that category. These uh, fairly hardcore conservatives here, we actually don't have that many in this particular setup of Canada. That blue line in the background, that, that, that lighter blue, this represents the percentage of Canadians that belong to this group. So if we click on here as well, we can see about only about 10% of Canadians consider themselves to be this hardcore conservative group over here. Whereas if we compare to capitalists, for example, uh, about three quarters of Canadians do fall under the capitalist group. Uh, and this game does properly do a breakdown over there, right? Capitalist and um, conservative are not the same thing. Similarly, liberal and socialist are not the same thing. Socialist is the opposite of capitalist and conservative is the opposite of liberal. But the two are not the same. You can be a liberal capitalist, uh, which is kind of um, um, a uh, libertarian kind of vibe, right? I want I want no laws to affect me and I want to make lots of money is basically the gist over here. Uh, and if you do click on this, you, you get a little bit of description of what their deal is. And then you can see, so again, how many people, so we have a lot of people who are liberals in Canada here. They really don't want um, a very oppressive government as much as possible. And down here, we can see everything that's affecting their happiness. They're a little unhappy that we do have wiretapping. Uh, they're unhappy about that, but they're happy about the fact that we do have a fair amount of right to privacy. And if we click on this, we can then look at these policies directly. But before I do that, let me talk about these circles over here. This is where all the action is. Everything that has a white circle, this is a law we can change. So if we click on intelligence services over here, we can change the level of intelligence services from very small to very big over here. Now for a lot of policies that ties into a cost, right? If we have a very extensive spy network over here, it's gonna cost us more, up to a billion dollars a quarter. Whereas if we bring it all the way down to the minimum, it still costs us about half a billion, but we can save some money. Some policies that you choose, the slider is gonna be very, very significant. Here, honestly, the difference between the minimum and the maximum isn't that huge for the intelligence services. The bigger thing is how it affects other things in your nation. If we have a spy satellite network. If we max out our intelligence services, liberals don't like that because the government is all up in their business. It does help to decrease crime. So the red level over here, this is what's currently happening. And the little pink behind it is this is what would happen if we were to set this policy. So you can see as I bring this slider over to the right, you can see that light pink line increasing. So liberals would get, are already kind of cranky, would get way crankier. Crime is being decreased a little by intelligence services and would be decreased a little bit more. The patriots of our nation would be happy with that, with, with this, you know, because they, I don't know, want, the, the patriots are a little bit more authoritarian, xenophobic, that kind of vibe over here. So they figure a strong spy network is gonna be a good idea. The number over here is how long it takes for these changes to actually apply. So if I were to crank this up, immediately liberals would get cranky and the patriots would be a little higher. And it would take over a period of six quarters the crime would be decreased a little bit. So some things happen instantly and some things take a while before it actually has an effect. We're gonna revert this change because I don't actually intend to make this change, at least not right now. 
So everything that's a white circle, this is something you can change. Press freedom. Press freedom has no cost over here. This is just what our laws are, but it has a huge effect on um, so liberals, how they feel, how everyone feels. It also affects, this is the membership. This is the number of people becoming liberals. So right now we have a lot of press freedom and that's making more people into liberals, but also making liberals happy. So that's not bad. It reduces corruption, right? Good press freedom reduces corruption and increase in democracy. That all sounds pretty good to me. Okay. Now let's talk about the things that are in blue. Blue, these are not things you directly change. There's no slider here. This is just giving you, uh, this is just showing you a statistic. So this is the level of crime currently in our country. So we're sitting at about 25% crime for whatever 25% means over here. On the left, you can see everything that's causing crime. Now, anything red is decreasing that number. Anything green is increasing. Green isn't necessarily good and red isn't necessarily bad. In fact, in this situation, it's the opposite because we would like to decrease crime as much as possible and we wouldn't want to increase. So we'd want lots of red and no green if at all possible because that would reduce crime to the max so you can see that our wiretapping our prisons our prison regime for example these are all bringing down crime whereas the fact that we have some poverty is increasing crime which makes sense desperate people turn to crime sometimes right if you're poor um police is going to be trying to bring it down uh, our firearm laws are currently increasing crime Equality is currently bringing it is, oh, actually we have, we have a high degree of equality here. So this is bringing down crime, right? Presumably I have good equality. Well, it's not as good as it could be. I think the better our equality, the more it would bring down crime. So if we want to fight crime, one of the ways we could do it is by decreasing poverty and increasing equality. Or we could just spend a bunch more on, on cops and give them bigger guns and bazookas and stuff like that. There's many different ways and approaches that you can go and a lot of different strategies you can use. And that's where some of the replayability, sometimes you're going to be playing, you'll play Canada and you'll make it a, a, a hippie commune paradise. And the next time you're going to go with a super oppressive, hardcore government that just cracks down and everything. And another time you'll go and make a scientific utopia. And another time you're going to make a religious theocracy. You can play it over and over. And there's lots of achievements for all these things as well. Um, so that's the blue, the blue, this represents some statistic that you can track. And then on the right, you can see what it affects, right? It's affected by things over here and it affects things over on the, the right. And then finally you got situations, something like obesity, for example. These, uh, they can come in good or they can come in bad. So we actually do have a positive situation here. Good news, everyone. There is enough global warming that the Northwest Passage has, has opened up. Oh, hooray. Anyways, this is actually, this is positive for Canada's business, right? International trade is improved by the Northwest Passage, but it's happening as a side effect of temperatures maybe being a little higher than they should be. Um, but then we also have bad things like obesity. So we have way too many obese people here in Canada, and that has caused an obesity problem to trigger up an obesity situation. Um, there's tons and tons of things that aren't always visible, but are being tracked in the background. But if they go above or below a certain line, it can start a situation. So at some point, our obesity crossed this line here, which is at 60%, right? Right over here, it hit 62%, and that probably triggered the obesity problem. Having this obesity problem is lowering the health of our country and increasing healthcare demand. And actually, having low health further increases healthcare demand. Having low health also decreases productivity. So because we have an obesity problem, we are less productive, which means we're making less money, but also we're having to use hospitals more, which means we're spending more money. So we're getting a double dip on obesity in terms of our financial situation. Also, while the obesity epidemic happening right now doesn't have a direct impact on voters, there's no voter groups on the right. If our health situation is lower, lots of people are going to be cranky about that. So solving obesity will mean we'll have, we'll make more money, we'll spend less money, and a lot of people will be happier. Another example over here is the respiratory disease. No, not that respiratory disease. We're talking about mostly things like asthma and eczema and things like that. And what's causing that? Well, tobacco usage is increasing respiratory disease. Pollution, car usage, all increasing respiratory disease. Our environment is actually bringing down the respiratory disease. Our environment is apparently in a relatively okay situation, but could be better. So if we um, decrease tobacco usage, how could we do that? Well, we could increase how much we tax cigarettes. If I can, oh, right over here, we could tax increase the cigarette tax, uh, which would decrease tobacco usage, but would make people cranky. It would also increase poverty because poor people don't have a lot of expendable or um, uh, like discretionary funds available. 
It's another word I'm looking for and it's not coming to mind over here. Uh, and so buying the cigarettes, the more expensive cigarettes are gonna make them have less and less money. It also decreases equality. Uh, another way we could tackle it is uh, the smoking ban. Right now it's set to low, I'm mostly saying like if you're a kid, you can't smoke, but we could increase, right? Make it, um, you know, oh, you have to be, presumably this is, you'd have to be 25 or older, or maybe like with maximum, it's literally, okay, everyone born after a certain year, you'll never be able to smoke. I believe uh, New Zealand just put in this kind of po uh, policy. So everyone who's like under a certain age today, we will never be able to legally smoke in New Zealand. I think they just passed that law. So we can do that. It would drop tobacco usage a lot, uh, but it would obsess the liberals because the liberals don't like it when the government interferes in their life. But maybe it would be a good thing. There might be other policies we can run to encourage people not to smoke as much, for example. There, there's a few things. What is this little policy? Oh, drug treatment scheme. So it is scaled by like cost and impact, right? This is only spending five million a, a quarter over here, which is nothing compared to our budget. So it's not a terribly uh, major policy. So if we wanted to start resolving issues in Canada, those two would be uh, possibilities. That's what I usually do is I look at these negative situations. By the way, if you mouse over, you can also get an overview of how things interact. Um, but yeah, I usually look at like trying to resolve some of these things over here. We're having environmental prote protests. Ugh. If we improve the environment, then there'd probably be fewer protests about it, but maybe we could also implement some laws to ban protests. Now, the, everything in white over here, again, are things you can change directly, but you can also, if you hit the light bulb here, you can put in new policies. Now, uh, the difference between blue and red over here, as well as, um, well, that's a bad example, uh, over here, green and red, these, uh, you, every change you make, every policy you want to implement or change costs you political capital. You get a certain amount every quarter. Um, and the red here is just too expensive. You can see the cost broken down, 6, 11, 21. And as I move this, you can see it would cost six to go over here, cost 11 to go over here, and over here it costs 21, which I can't do because I only have 14 political capital right now. Uh, most of it does come from the ministers over here. We do have a cabinet that uh, they provide a certain amount of political capital. This guy here is only producing one per month. Maybe we could uh, sub him out. I could spend one capital and try to hire someone new. I could also spend 10 capital to reshuffle the entire cabinet simultaneously. Um, that does cost, uh, well, I was gonna say, the, it's always 10. The cost to fire people depends on um, some of their values over here. Usually it's cheaper to do a full reshuffle. It also leads to a little bit less crankiness. If you're constantly firing um, individual ministers, it can lead to a certain political backlash. So it might be better, but see all these are pretty low. These guys are okay, like they're pretty pleased, but a little bit less over here and it might be worth doing a bit of a reshuffle. Spend my political capital now to hopefully get more competent, more loyal, more experienced ministers. Um, so that uh, we get more political capital. They all have sympathies with certain groups. If the poor or the parents get really cranky with me, this guy here is gonna be cranky and might quit. Um, in fact, that's probably what's being represented by his loyalty here. But on the other hand, they do improve the happiness of those groups because this guy is really addressing the need of parents constantly. And so our parents will be happy that there's someone representing their uh, interests in government. What else do we have that? Oh yeah, so we have the environmental protests. Uh, we have an uncompetitive economy. Uh, our productivity is not as good as it could be. Oh, sorry, wrong way around. Here, the greens are bad. Uh, so peril tax, minimum wage, corporate tax is hurting our uh, competitiveness, but actually our productivity, no, productivity is really low. I mean, I guess it's not nothing. Well, we'll see what else can do. This is really hurting our GDP though. We definitely don't want that and upsetting capitalists. It would be lovely to deal with this if we could. And we do have a fair amount of pollution. It would be great to bring pollution below the stop trigger here and just have this effect go away. It actually would make a stupendous difference. It is hard to, to tweak directly though. We do some reforestation. It wouldn't be that expensive to increase this. Well, this seems like a really good pick doesn't upset anyone. It actually brings down unemployment because we're hiring people to plant trees. It brings down pollution and CO2 emissions and respiratory disease directly, which will further be decreased as pollution decreases. It increases the environment, or this makes environmentalists happy, but improves the environment, which will further reduce in respiratory disease. This seems like the thing to do. Not that expensive, good impact. Some of it's gonna take a while to take effect, but you know what, right away, I'm gonna go ahead and spend eight political capital increasing our reforestation rate. I think that's an excellent idea. We don't have a lot left over. Well, there's a lot of things here I wanna run. A lot of things I wanna run. 
Oh, man. You know what? I might do something as simple as a uh, Keep Country Tidy campaign. This is not going to be very expensive. Everyone's pleased with it. Uh, mostly because I don't think anyone's negatively impacted by this. And the environmentalists will like it. So it's a very popular decision. And will help boost the environment. It does make more environmentalists. So if I'm going to do this, I, may, I have to make sure the environmentalists stay happy. Because I'm making more of them. How are they feeling about us right now? Not very good. Mostly because the environment's not great and we have a lot of pollution. Uh, the CO2 emissions aren't a winner either. So that might be something to, to look. We might we might have a real kind of eco-minded policy here. Uh, what else do I want to run? I mean, you can bank your political capital. You can only bank so much. Uh, do you get the breakdown of it over here? Yeah, our maximum is currently 28. Um, I don't know. If it, is a, it is based on how much you make. I don't think it's necessarily like double what you make. Um, I'm not sure what the math is on that, but there's a maximum that you can retain. Uh, so if you want to make a more expensive change, you might have to just bank a bunch one turn to use the next. Uh, but I'm kind of in, in into the idea of running something. Anything that's relatively cheap, but fairly popular is a good one to start up with. Um, the small business or the business startup campaign would make more capitalists or would make capitalists happy. Uh, and we do have a lot of capitalists. We know 75% of our population is a capitalist. Um, so it would make them happy. It would make more people join the self-employed group. We also make that group happy. It would upset the socialists, but apparently we don't have that many hardcore socialists here. And it's cheap as heck. It doesn't, this doesn't actually make us more money though. Right? Although it might be doing something behind the scenes to do that. Clean energy subsidies is kind of nice. Not that many people are into it. But environmentalists, the environment, lower CO2 emissions. It's not that popular because we have a lot of capitalists and the capitalists don't like the idea that we're spending government money to subsidize things. I think we might do this, although right now it is a little pricey and we're a bit in a bad situation financially speaking. So maybe I won't run this now. Oh, well, small business council doesn't cost much. Obsess the socialists, but makes the capitalists happy. Again, we have more capitalists than socialists. So politically this makes sense and it does boost the GDP without costing us too much along the way. Now, generally speaking, we're gonna want the GDP to be as high as possible. Um, yeah, the impact's fairly small and fairly slow, but, oh, and it's socialist membership. So this is gonna decrease the number of people who become socialists while making capitalists happy. But yeah, high GDP does lead to a little bit more pollution and inequality as well, but you know, we might be able to deal with those later. All right, let's run the National Business Council. We're basically out of points over here. So let's go ahead and skip to the next turn. Oh, and we get a little bit of information. GDP has improved. Unemployment has gone down, which is a good thing. And it's no longer got the orange background. We still have a lot of unemployment. It's not great, but it's there. We do have a few situations imminent uh, and to deal with. First of all, we have a question. We have a question about whaling. So um, I don't think you're guaranteed to get this every quarter, but you'll often get one of these types of questions. Resolutions before the government proposing the reintroduction of small scale commercial whaling in our waters. Whale meat is a prized local delicacy and commercial whaling would create many jobs. So we could resume whaling. Whales consume an enormous amount of fish and may be responsible for a drop in fish catches that affect our economy. Whaling would also provide a welcome boost to our economy. Not every species of whale is endangered and commercial whaling can go ahead without danger of causing extinction or we could keep the ban in place. Whales are generally accepted to be amongst the most intelligent non-human species on earth. They maintain a crucial position in the aquatic food chain and yet have been hunted close to extinction. Restarting commercial whaling would be incredibly destructive as well as potentially causing a drop in tourism. We should refocus our efforts on whale watching rather than hunting. Oftentimes there's not really a singular right answer in these um, dialogue boxes. Um, I mean, you might, think ethically one is one is more right than another but in terms of min maxing for the gameplay oftentimes there's not one that's just purely correct where this is just going to give you a huge boost and the other one's just going to give you a huge penalty so you always click that usually it's going to depend very much on how you're playing and what your strategy is uh, and and again kind of kind of have a role play in mind for your particular government if we're playing hardcore capitalists we might go resume whaling now we do have a lot of capitalists in our nation this would probably make them happy on the other hand we are trying to also pander to environmentalists and we're doing things to increase the po the um uh the membership in environmentalists which probably would be happier if we kept the man in place i'm gonna go ahead and do that there we go so we can see the actual impact so capitalists aren't too happy about that environmentalists and liberals are very happy uh conservatives and farmers are not but it also makes us look more compassionate 
We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, so we get a budget report, various threats. We also get warned a situation is imminent over here. We, if um, we are threat of maybe becoming a technology backwater, if this meter goes just a little higher, if it hits 60, it'll start the technology backwater uh, situation, which would not be good. Currently, technology is bringing that down. Stem cell research is barely bringing it down. Um, our current secularity education is bringing this up. Now, this is something we want low. We want to bring this down. So we want to we want to do something to improve our technology. Uh, we want to increase our science funding, for example. And maybe we want to go to a hardcore, purely Darwinist education. Because right now we have an emphasis on science, but that's as far as it gets. We could go fully secular or atheist for our education, or we could pull back and go all the way to fundamentalist, which would be a different vibe. But those, that's another way we can control certain things here. Let's go ahead and continue for now and see where we're at. We've got 16 political power available. Okay. Um, our popularity is not very good. But yeah, let's take a look at um, over here. Electioneering. Excellent. So again, to not lose the game, we're going to have to get reelected in five years here. Uh, and this is, oh, by the way, this is what this meter here represents. As this fills up, we will eventually have another election going on. And there's this perception of us as to in terms of where we are. And look at this. We are perceived as being compassionate because we helped save the whales. Aha. Uh -huh. So that helped us in our potential future election. We can do more media stance over here. You know, be filmed feeding a baby land. So it'll cost us some political capital to arrange. Um... Chance of success, impact on perception. So if this works, it'll make us look very much more compassionate. We could also do a stunt to look like a strong leader, do a little bit of judo, be interviewed while jogging. Yeah, that's actually fairly successful. I don't think we'll spend political capital on that right now because I'd rather fix some problems earlier and maybe spend political capital a little bit more as we get closer to an election, especially, you know, to boost whatever might be low. But the other thing is anything I can do now to A, improve the situation of the nation, but also please voters this way. That's another good way to get elected. So there's tons of extra little buttons over here. Oh yeah, I can remove... Um, We can change how some of these things are listed. So influence, GDP is influencing tons of things. Popularity, so what's popular versus not. Finances, how much money this brings in and costs. So we'll get most of our money from income tax and a lot of our money goes to pensions right now. And weighted will take into account all these things sort of put together. So the idea is anything that's tiny here, you probably don't have to deal with. Anything that's big, you really want to keep that foremost in mind, right? So like income tax, changing the slider has a huge impact, both on how much money you bring in, but also how everyone feels about you. So that's a really big button to concern yourself with. And yeah, the reason state pensions is so big is it does affect a lot of people, but it also costs a lot. We're paying $18 billion a quarter right now in our state pensions. So that's something that can definitely impact things. Have we made any change in obesity? Not really. We haven't made any policy changes there. Really, our policy changes were more towards respiratory disease, which is currently pinned at 100%. We got a long way to go before it makes a change. And some of these things will take a while before they take effect. You can see the reforestation hasn't completely kicked in here. So again, the actual core gameplay, fairly simple. You click on a policy, you adjust the number, right? Or you start a new policy over here. But it's because everything is super interlinked. That's where the complexity of the game comes in. It's There's there's a lot to try to understand and it's not a puzzle. It's, it is like a puzzle in that it's, um, you know, you're, you're just putting some pieces together. That part is easy to understand. But being able to solve a whole puzzle, that's going to take a while. And that's where the challenge comes in. I think that's pretty much all we can say in terms of the introduction to this game. I'm going to keep playing this Let's Play in the next episode. This episode here was sponsored by Positex, so thank you very much to those guys. Um, the uh, Democracy 4 is coming out of early access as I'm recording this. Uh, you can check the links down below in the doobly-doo, uh, because I think when this video goes live is when the game will be officially out of early access. Uh, technically, I'm still in, on an early access build here, which is pretty much the same, if not exactly what's going to be released, um, which is very exciting exciting. Uh, as of someone who was a big fan of the previous democracies, Democracy 4 uh, is the, the UI revamp. Fantastic. A little bit. It's, it's, it's the same as previous games, except you can get a little bit more information on, on the screen. Uh, the icon scaling is new. Uh, the popularity being listed here instead of sort of a block in the middle, it makes it a lot easier to read. Uh, we can also sort this. This is sort by membership. So obviously everyone's in the all group. And if we look down, the ultra wealthy group is the smallest one. So we really don't care about what they think of us. Well, with one exception, 
If the ultra wealthy group gets uh, a little too um, a little too cranky, or if any group gets a little too cranky, we can get these radicalized uh, groups who will try to assassinate us. I don't know if the ultra wealthy is linked to one of these. I'm not certain. Maybe they're the invisible hand. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you get a breakdown here of what they are. But yeah, if any of these, if, if a group of voters gets too cranky, they will join these groups over here. These are advocacy groups. Uh, they are going to uh, work against you politically and that sort of thing. But the real danger is if any of these start to become radicalized, then their members come down here. So the Avengers of Mother Earth, those are really cranky environmentalists and they will try to just kill you. You can counter that by increasing the security level of your nation by enacting curfews and ID cards and mandatory microchip implants. But obviously that's A, gonna cost and B, probably make certain groups kind of cranky. So you can, die, you can lose from being assassinated. Uh, maybe it's more common to lose from losing an election, but it really depends. Also, it'd be great if I could fix the economy of Canada here. I'll see what I can do next time. Thanks a lot for watching, folks. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.